Well, hello, dear viewers. Hello, 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 hello. Here I am at Camp Gospel. It is Saturday night here. It's a very cold night here. We got some Arctic air that funneled its way into the area here. We had a lot of high winds today, too. So, it was a pretty tough day, honestly. Pretty tough. Maybe a pot of coke wall, too. So, it's kind of what I got going on tonight. So, I'm going to be in uh, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah here. Uh, tonight is chapter 40, I believe, yes. So, it's cold here tonight. Um, and I've been hibernating most of the day. Staying in Mr. Wiggy's sleeping bag. But, I, I need to get out, you know. I just got motivated. I'm going to make some cocoa. It's been very windy, too. Those winds were today were gusting to about like 60 miles per hour. So that's kind of what was going on today. It was a rough day here. So, so we're in chapter 40 here. Yeah, here we are. In Isaiah the prophet here. Let's see if I can read this here. Come on. Yep, chapter 40 here. That's what we're going to start off here. So, let me get into the Bible here. Get some Bible reading in. Okay, so, here it is. Chapter 40 says, this is Isaiah the prophet here. God speaking to Isaiah the prophet here says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Let's see. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. There's that phrase, the Lord again. The Lord's in all caps. That's Jehovah there. It has talked about Jehovah. Prepare ye the way of Jehovah. It would make straight in the desert a highway for our God. It says, Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. There's the name of God again, Jehovah there shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it so this is we turn to Matthew's gospel it's speaking in reference to the Messiah to the Lord Jesus Christ here so let's see we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 3 here so it says starting in verse 1 it says in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So, so here it's plainly speaking about um, the Lord Jesus Christ here. Because we go to um, verse 15 here. Um, well, actually, um, 13. Verse 13, same chapter, chapter 3 of Matthew's Gospel says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of John. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, 
in whom I am well pleased. So we see the Godhead in verses 16 and 17. Um, all three persons of the Godhead manifested. We see Jesus, the Son there. And we see the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit there. Um, and we hear the Father's voice, God the Father's voice in verse 17. So, um, so again, this just clearly shows who Jesus is. He was God. God manifested in the flesh. Jesus Christ was not a created being. He wasn't a little God like the Jehovah Witnesses try to claim. And they even... They even um, corrupted the Bible, you know, with their New World Translation. They called Jesus a God, like a little God. But um, but this is so clear that um, who Jesus is, he was God. He was Jehovah God manifest in the flesh. Okay, so we're going to turn to Luke's Gospel 2, chapter 3 again. Let's see. Verse, let's see. Talk about John the Baptist. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And we know from Isaiah, that's talked about Jehovah. Because Lord's in all caps, and that phrase, the Lord, is the name Jehovah in the Hebrew. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough way shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So it's quoting from Isaiah the prophet here, Luke here. So we know that's talking about Jehovah there. Because that's what Isaiah says. It clearly says the way of the Lord and Lord's in all caps. So that's the name Jehovah there. So that's for all you Jehovah Witnesses out there that claim that Jesus Christ is not God. He was just a created being or a God as the New World Translation renders it in their corrupt Bible there. But here we see that Jesus Christ was spoken of by Isaiah the prophet and it calls him the Lord. Let me read this again. This is Isaiah chapter 40, starting at verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Lord's in all caps there, so that's the name Jehovah. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So it's talking about our God. And there's only one God that Israel knew, and that was Jehovah. There was no other God that Israel knew. So, and it personalizes Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The voice said, Cry, and he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And that word is, the word of our God is this Bible here, folks. This is what's going to stand forever, according to the Holy Scripture. The word of our God, the Holy Bible. Let me check my thing here. Let's check. Okay, good. It's still running here. All right, so it's going to be a good Bible study tonight. Good Bible reading, I trust. And we'll move this over because it's kind of... Okay. O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, of Judah, behold your God. 
Behold, the Lord God, so God in, is in all caps, so that's the name Jehovah there. Behold, the Lord God, Lord's in capital L, then the rest of the letters are lowercase, so that's the Hebrew word, Adonai, or, yeah, Adonai, yeah, Adonai, Lord. And God is in all caps there, so that's Adonai, Jehovah, that would be. Will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And of course, this is again talking about Jesus here. It's a reference to the Messiah, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's talking about Jesus Christ here. It says, Behold, the Lord God, and God's in all caps. So we talk, we talk, we talk about Jehovah now. The Lord God will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall flee, feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them into his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. Talking about Jesus here. And of course, Jesus called himself the good shepherd in the Gospel of John. Let's see if I can find that real fast here. We won't read the whole passage here, but to compare scripture with scripture here, Jesus referred to himself as the good shepherd. I believe it's chapter uh, 10. Yes, I do believe it's chapter 10 here. It's a little hard for me to read this. It's kind of dark. The light's dim. Plus, it's small print. This Bible is a really small Bible. It's actually a compact size. So I should be reading a large print, really, but that's what I got. I want to break it in, you know. Okay, Jesus said, here is, this is chapter 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that enter, entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And, and Jesus is referring to himself here. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know not his voice. For they know, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Let's see. Then in verse 7, um, it, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. In verse 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Then it goes on here. So, um, so that's what Isaiah, the prophet, is talking about, the Messiah here. So let me read this again. Um, verse start, verse ten. It says, "Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and His arms shall rule for Him. Behold, His reward is with Him, and His work before Him." He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. It's talking about Jesus, the Messiah here. This is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 10 and 11. It says, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow, hollow of his hand? And meted out heaven with the, with the span, and comprehended the dust of the earth within a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor hath taught him? With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, 
he taketh up the isles as a very small thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. This is how great God is, you know. To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? The workman noteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over with gold, and casteth silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation, chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. And the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will ye liken me? Or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high. And behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number? He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might. For, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. Hast thou not heard? Wait a minute. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, there's that phrase, the Lord, there's the name Jehovah right there, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail, shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, or in all caps again, there's that phrase, the Lord, that's the name of God, Jehovah, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So I'm gonna have me another drink here. It's cold out here tonight. We got this Arctic air that moved into the. Maybe a pot of cold water tonight. I'm going to read another chapter here of Isaiah. about hot drinks they keep you warm inside okay chapter 41 here you gotta forgive me my eyes are bad too so sometimes it's hard for me to see especially this tiny little typeface i think it's 5.5 typeface in here okay chapter 41 of isaiah keep silence before me O islands and let the people renew their strength let them come near then let them speak let us come to, near to get near together to judgment who raised up the righteous man from the east called him to his foot gave the nations before him and made him rule over kings he gave them as the dust to his sword and as driven stubble to his bow he pursued them and passed safely even by the way that he had not gone with his feet who have who have brought and done it calling the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, there's the name Jehovah again, I, the Lord, the 
first and with the last. IMP. The Isle saw and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid, drew near and came. They helped everyone his neighbor, and everyone said to his brother, Be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smootheth, smootheth with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering, and he fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So this is, this is Israel's, um, Israel, see a lot of people believe that Israel is no longer um, the chosen people of God and they, and since they rejected their Messiah, that God uh, replaced them with the church. That, that's called the uh, replacement theology and it's totally false, folks totally unbiblical because because God says right here but thou Israel art my servant Jacob whom I have chosen the seed of Abraham my friend thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee thou art my servant I have chosen thee and not cast thee away so God hasn't cast his people away we could turn to um, real quick here to, to the epistle to the Romans here. Apostle Paul here is writing to the uh, Romans here. And um, okay, let's see. Okay, chapter 11, verse 1 here, the Apostle. Paul says this, I say then, hath God cast away his people, meaning the Jewish people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. So again, it goes on that God hasn't cast away uh, Jewish people Israel so they are still his people very much so so let's get back to Isaiah here I read verse 9 again thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee thou art my servant I have chosen thee and not cast thee away and in verse 8 it's talking about Israel here but thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So God is speaking about Israel here. So anyone that hates Israel or is, um, hates the Jewish people, they're definitely not pleasing God at all. In fact, they're, they're in great sin, you know, for hating God's people. And verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And this is talking in reference to Israel here, folks, so keep this in mind. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. It's just like what's going on today, oh, the whole world turned against Israel ever since Hamas um, attacked Israel on um, October 7th of last year, we see the whole world just turn against Israel, even the United States government, and many Americans too hate Jew the Jewish people, they hate Israel. But listen to what God says to about, about such people. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them, and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing, kind of like with Hamas and Iran and Hezbollah and the Houthis there in Yemen. So this is a warning to all people that hate the Jewish people and that go to war against them, it says. 
they that war against thee shall be as nothing, and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord, and there's the name of God there, the Lord Jehovah, the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord. Just the name of God again, Jehovah there. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and shalt make the hills as chaff. it again <laughs> okay but let me read this again okay thou shalt fan them and the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst I the Lord so this is the name of God again Jehovah I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Notice God calls himself the God of Israel. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shittah, and the myrtle and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord, is the name of God again, Jehovah, hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. So if you go to Israel today, it's full of trees. I mean, I look at these videos, and it's so green looking, there's like trees everywhere, even clumps of trees, like forest and wooded areas. When the Jews came back to the land and back in the late 1880s, 80, 1890s, and they were coming back to settle the land of Israel, the land was pretty much just barren and just desolate. But now it's like full of trees, it's really green looking in Israel. So this is a testimony to God's word here. Let me read this again. God is speaking here. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. We see that today. That took place in Israel right now. So I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shittah, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord, if the name of Jehovah, hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the King of Jacob. Let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things, what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them or declare us things for to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter that we may know that ye are gods. Yea, do good or do evil that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing and your work of naught and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you. He's talking about idolatry here, those who choose idols over the true and living God. So that's the context here. And God is kind of being, um, you, you're kind of using some um, salty humor, I guess, in some respects about those who would choose idols over the true God, Jehovah. Okay. I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come. From the rising of the sun shall he call upon my name, and he shall come upon princes as upon mortar, and as the potter treaded clay, who hath declared from the from the beginning 
that we may know, and before time, that we may say, He is righteous. Yea, there is none that showeth. Yea, there is none that declareth. Yea, there is none that heareth your words. The first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold him. And I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. For I beheld, and there was no man, even among them, and there was no counselor, that, when I asked of them, could answer a word. Behold, they are all vanity, their works are nothing, their molten images are wind and confusion. Okay, so I'm going to move this to my, um, to my different file here. Alright, so it's starting to get cold here, I might lay back down here. But we're reading God's Word, the Bible here, dear viewers. So, on this Saturday, cold Saturday night here. So, I'll be back.